Hey everybody, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 618 being recorded on March 3rd, 2021. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Holstrom, eh? I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spurenberg, not A. A? A? Uh, you can subscribe to find out when we go live for events like this podcast recording session by going to pcper.com slash subscribe and joining our exciting mailing list. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash pcper, right? It's just pcper. It is. Okay. It is. P-C-P-E-R yeah. and give us money so that we can yes. keep doing this. The uh, weird thing is, is nobody else wanted that name. I mean, we right. got it. Isn't that clever? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was clever. We're blessed. Mm-hmm. Any Mm -hmm. new patrons? You know, there is. Today's new patron is just known as Steve. 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 Yeah, Steve. Steve. He'll know who he is. It's Steve. And thank you very much, Steve. And if anybody else logs into Patreon Patreon while we're on the air and wants to change their name to something... I'll get an email and I can read it out loud. Yeah. If he it's what Steve's taken. too bad. Sorry. Yeah, don't say Steve. Steve. Steve, no. Steve. Steve would be would be redundant. Don't do Steve. Yes. Not 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 Steve. Hey. It could be not Steve. Let's glide right in. I was worried earlier today. I didn't see any updates from Josh. Lunchtime came and went, and then I realized Josh is mm-hmm. like two hours behind. Mm-hmm. Josh, mm-hmm. did you end up having a burger? Yes. This week. Okay, let's go to Josh. Yeah, it's uh <clears throat> let me let me get this uh this one is called the honey maker. And you think why does honey belong on a burger? And then you think a little further and you're like, you know what? If you put a little honey and some dates on top of two twin patties, four ounce. And then you cover that with some feta cheese and some caramelized onions. You've got a balancing act there between sweet and sour and acid that somehow works to accentuate the meat flavor of the twin patties. It just melts in your mouth. There's there's a certain crispness also to the uh, to the dates and 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 the way that they they actually cook the burgers. It may not be for for everyone. Some people are are not fond of dates, like Jeremy. Hey, I'm, you're making me hungry, man. Oh, but anyway, but I'm already full. I was talking about the other other dates. But well, anyway. Oh, yeah. He'll, uh, he'll, he'll never no, date you uh, again. It, he'll never date you all, again. Is what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, but it it all worked together into a nice half pound of of burger that fits into your hands and is consumed way too quickly, and and the fries. The fries were were on point. As you can see, one was was cracked in half, and you can see the the soft, fluffy inside and the the crispy, well seasoned outside. I mean, it was it was a good lunch, and and I'm I'm not going to again eat anything for the next twenty four hours, and I'm happy about it, and I'm I'm happy. That was getting almost too graphic, but in a good way. All right, and if you don't put a musical accompany to this, I'm going to be I know, I missed out on that opportunity last week, and it's not going to happen again. Unless it does. Unless I just right. straight it up might. It could go either way. Again. Josh, these burgers sound like they're assembled by professionals. That list of ingredients is next tier. It is unique. I mean, they, they go out and they really work to find unique combinations that actually work together. And in this case, it, it did. It was not overly sweet at all even though it had honey drizzled on it and dates i mean the, the feta and, and the caramelized onions they 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 provided that kind of backstop against getting too sweet and it really accentuated the flavors of all of them it was it was quite nice nice honey maker mm. not the honey badger but the honey maker no. go honey Those badger don't you. care at all yeah. no you don't want to put one of those in your mouth Nope. No. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the big news story, obviously, of the day. And I we actually we just had it. news happen on a Wednesday, finally. So we didn't have to delay the podcast or anything. So AMD held an event on their YouTube channel and announced 
We were expecting RX 6700 series. We just got an XT. We didn't get a 6700. But we have a new graphics card. Josh, were you paying attention to this announcement? Do you have any insights for us about what this is? I was. I mean, it is a new chip. It is a new RDNA chip from AMD, and it is a smaller, big knobby. That makes any sense, but it's, uh, you know, instead of uh, 72, well, actually, the, the big knobby is a total of 80 uh, compute units in full form, which is the 6900 XT. This is half that. Uh, it's at 40. And it's got a 192-bit bus running at 16 gigabit, uh, giving, I can't remember how many gigabytes per second. You'll have to figure that out on the side. 360 gigabyte per second. <clears throat> but 12 gigs of it. So they've got an advantage over, you know, some of the previous older versions, like a 2080 Ti, which is 8 gigs, and 2070 and a 2060 Super. Uh, this was introduced at $479. So, of course, there is much debate on how much AMD can actually provide to their partners and to uh, end users because you can buy these directly from AMD.com in the near future, supposedly. We're leaving that one up in the air. Mm -hmm. Hands. Air. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, availability. Yeah, I mean it's 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 going to be rare to find because yeah. there's such a huge demand. Market forces are extremely strong, and when you've got you know Bitcoin mining, you're going to be fighting against everybody to get one of these but, gamers. But Josh, they're doing resellers. drops. Man, they're doing what? drops. They're doing drops. That's what they called it. Drop, drops. AMD. Like every week, they're going to be releasing. Uh, first party the cards AMD on their loot site. Box? Yeah, mm, essentially. Oh, like AMD loot box. Every week they're going to do a drop of availability so that people can have a chance. They aren't going to just load it all uh, yeah. at, at once. But they are releasing all the third parties as well. All of their uh, add in board partners are, are yeah, them at the 18. same time. Yeah. We're going to see if that actually works out. <clears throat> Total board power 230 watts. Uh, this thing goes up game clock. 2.424 gigahertz. That's that nuts. That's is. nuts. That's awesome. But it's nuts. And uh, you know, performance is is looks like it's it's above a 2080 Ti, but it drops. Well, not 20. Was it 2080 or the 2080 Super? Is what they? Yeah. Yeah. There yep. was one slide. It's not here, but there was one slide yeah. that showed it above against the 2080 Super. Yeah, and 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 the yeah, well, 3060 Ti and 3070. So mm -hmm. it, it looks like it really is about on par with the uh, 3070, but it's got four gigs more of memory, which is kind of a big deal, uh, especially in in a lot of these new games. Like uh, I think uh, what is it, Resident Evil Village, is going to require more than 10 gigs. Um, there are current other games like uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 is is nine and a half gigs. And so uh, you're going to have a, a little bit of a an advantage in some of these things as well as uh, as long as you're not relying on ray tracing from, you know, DXR. Uh, it's going to, you know, have the raster power to compete with the 3060 Ti and the 3070. I don't think it's going to quite get close enough to the 3080 but uh, you know, still, it's it's uh, for four seventy nine. It actually kind of moves the needle a little bit. I mean, because we were talking last week, thirty sixty, not that much faster than a thirty sixty super. And yeah, three twenty nine is not a horrible price, but it's it's you know you get ten percent more from you know a previous gen product than you may have in your machine, and you bought for between three hundred and twenty and four hundred bucks. And so that's not an upgrade, but this, it is an upgrade. It's an upgrade from a 5700 XT. It's an upgrade from a 3080, a 2080 Super. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, like I said, 40 compute units and uh, how many what? Uh, I don't see how many stream units, but. Maybe 2560. They're up there. 2560. 20, one for every scan line. 60. <laughs> nice. Uh, boost clock up to 2.5. 
six gigahertz almost. And I imagine uh, some of these third party cards that have better VRMs and, and uh, cooling and whatnot, uh, you'll be hitting up to 2.6, 2.7 gigahertz. I mean, that's just nuts for a GPU. That's something we haven't seen in, in a while. We've seen, you know, bumps and bumps and bumps and, and then bang with this generation it just kind of blew the lid off of it and it provides a tremendous amount of performance uh but again you know 230 watts is is not nothing uh, but compared to 300 300 plus with yeah. you know a 6900 xt uh you're you're you know it's 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 a better mid-range card um, and I and I kind of choke saying mid range because mid range previously was two hundred to three hundred and fifty. I mean, this is certainly the lower end of the high end. But you know, considering where prices have gone and what these manufacturers have been doing, um, you know, you still get some good performance for the price, historically speaking. And when you compare it to, you know, the 3060 Ti, 3070, uh, and even the 3080, because it's, you know, $250 less than what you can get one of those, that, that if you can get it MS, MSRP, then, right. you know, it's it's all positive stuff. Um, well, they're, they're aiming this right at high refresh 1440 gaming, you know. Which is interesting. Yeah. Based, yeah. They didn't talk about 4K at all in the presentation. No, but I mean, their high-end cards didn't really turn out to be super 4K beasts. I mean, you saw that in some of your testing yeah, either. So I, I they kind of backed away if, from that. I kind of wondered if it had anything, anything to do with the Infinity cache. And what's interesting is that mm. this card has less because it's, it's kind of a cut down. I mean, it has fewer CUs. It's 192-bit. It also only has 96 megabytes instead of 128 megabytes of this cache. Of Infinity cache. Mm-hmm. And I'm not sure if that has anything to do with it, but we, they didn't show any slides. It's, they said basically this is a 1440p, like your ultimate gaming card. They didn't, and you'd think with 12 gigabytes of memory, that's you, you don't really need that much memory unless you're playing at 4K. But obviously there are instances where 1440, you know, high res textures can exceed eight gigabytes. Right. So. There's a certain vocal crowd out there that'll just yell and scream, "Future proof!" You know, get your fat textures ready to go and stuff like that so yeah i, I mean if they I mean, can do it affordably they they've been known to to pump their cards a little bit plus it gives them something to brag about at that at that level of the graphics card tier yeah and certainly you know with less infinity cache and you know much smaller memory bandwidth i mean you're going to struggle at 4k and so you know why even accentuate that and especially as you know they did mention and it, it it's worth repeating um, 1440p monitors are, I mean, some of the best sellers out there. 27 inch 1440 is kind of like the sweet spot for a lot of people. You can get good products in between 230 and 350 bucks. And a lot of people can actually afford that. Right. I mean, right. it'd be nice to, to get some, you know, more government money in and, and, uh, you know, get, get more monitors, but yeah, that's, um, uh, that's that's where a lot of the, the the people who you know are saving up for, you know, gaming monitors and 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 gaming rigs. That's really the sweet spot because they get you know usually a pretty good VA or IPS panel, uh, one one twenty to you know two hundred and fifty hertz performance out of of that kind of range. Um, you know, it's 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 a good buy for them. Um, you know, I've got a, a downstairs on one of the test machines. I've got a 144 hertz, 27 inch, 1440p, and it's it's a pleasure to game on. It just is a good looking monitor. I mean, it was not when I purchased it. It was you know I have, nine months ago. It was 275 bucks. It was cheap for what you get. So you know, I've been I've been happy with that, and and uh, you know, it's good for a testing machine and. You know, just do some some basic gaming on. I mean, it's just everything is right there. And and if they're aiming at this at that, that's that's it's a good thing. And I mean, they're lowering the price point down to four seventy nine, which for a next generation card that actually improves upon previous generation performance, unlike the thirty sixty, 
you know, it's it's right. it's right. it's a compelling buy when you kind of view it in that angle. And I mean, they, they were smart to to really kind of hit upon that instead of just saying, "Well, this will do 4K." It's like, no, this is premium for 1440p and high refresh monitors that are almost ubiquitous. You go on to Newegg and, and and those are the ones that are on sale for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks below MSRP. And they're everywhere. And they're good. And an upgrade hey, extra, for a lot of people. That extra overhead isn't going to go to waste for people who are investing in a widescreen either. Those extra pixels mm-hmm. aren't free. So, you know, it may seem like, oh, that's, that's a, you know, a lot of card for only 1440p or 1080p. Believe me, there's a lot of people out there who would like to combine a modestly priced GPU with a widescreen because widescreens are getting mm-hmm. a lot less expensive. Like I just saw that uh, ultra wide. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, an, an ultra wide, like, um, you know, 3440 or something uh, along those lines at 14, 3440, 1440 uh, or equivalent. 2K plus, but not quite 4K. Let's be honest. All this talk about its value and whether it's a good buy or not, it's irrelevant because it won't be available in any quantity. Think about this. They said nothing about intentionally reducing Ethereum hash rate like NVIDIA did with the 3060. They did not. This is a card that will have whatever price the market will bear based on its hash rate. And that's just the sad reality of living in a world where Bitcoin is $50,000. Mm-hmm. And Ethereum I, I guess it is, dropped what, a lot today. Sixteen hundred. <laughs> yeah, because I know you're not actually mining Bitcoin on a graphics card. You're mining those on ASICs, and it's out of the realm of any consumer who just wants to mine on a graphics card. But Ethereum mining is obviously where a lot of these GPUs end up. If you look at the farms right. of just right. piles and piles of cards, so that unfortunately is, I think, going to make a big difference in availability for this card i don't think the 3060 is going to be available either really i mean is it i have not no. seen it available new eggs got it on shuffle oh it's on i the was shuffle. able that's to get right. one that's right <clears throat> about i that got one. lucky now i'm sure the the 6700 xt will end up on the shuffle too mm-hmm. and hopefully there'll be at least one skew at 479 so at that point you're you're deciding between 329 and 479 do they have any other GPUs on the shuffle that you see? Do they have like 3060 Ti's or 3070s? Yeah, they, they actually, today, they have 3060 Ti and 3070s. Wow. wow. And a 6800 and 6800 XT. Except the prices on wow. those were nuts. 6800 for 900 and some odd bucks, and then the 6800 XT for almost 1200 I think. That is crazy it's Almost talk. Canadian prices. Yeah, and that's, you know, direct from Newegg. Not just like New Egg Seller. So I'm I'm not I have no idea what the hell's going on with AMD and uh, their graphics card, and neither does my cat, whose tail just I wonder if the cat was there because I heard this ticking stream. sound. Like I bet that's Josh's cat. It I is the cat. Tone. Yeah. So if you hear that on the audio, the podcast listeners, it is Josh's cat making walking presence known. in front. Yeah. She's she likes to bat at my fingers when they're on the keyboard. And she still has front claws. So that's right. that's pleasant in uh, the extreme. In their presentation, did they talk about their Fidelity FX at all? Super resolution or any other software no, enhancement they did type not. stuff? Just talked about it being upcoming. Like upcoming, I think, 40 titles with support or I don't remember exactly the number. That was DXR stuff. The video. Was uh, it they DXR? didn't talk okay. about they didn't talk about the super scaling type things like DLSS competitor. Okay, mm-hmm. not at all. I don't think that's anywhere close to being ready, and uh, that is certainly an area that Nvidia still has a tremendous uh, amount of advantages, especially when you're starting to deal with uh, uh, ray tracing and DXR. It's just it's of the weirdest time to cover hardware. I think everybody's saying the same thing at this point. It's it's like bizarre. It's not so much fun anymore. It, you no. know, it's yeah. The joy is is being sucked out of it. I was pricing out a Dell system today, just last resort. Like, well, where can you buy these graphics cards? Dell systems of a thousand dollars at this point. Thousand dollar XPS system just has the Intel six thirty 
processor graphics. The only mm. pre-configured system with a 3070 was 2799. That's nuts. If you go on a, a Newegg, at least there are ABS systems that are usually available. For 1500 bucks, you'll get a reasonable pro, a reasonable processor and a 3070. So Yeah, it's That's it's good. the only way to really get a hold of of these next generation parts without you know, getting lucky on the new egg shuffle is to buy a full system. And a friend of mine who is piecing together a system starting in August of last year, I mean, he still has not gotten an upgraded video card because, you know, he just figures he wanted to build his own. He knew new stuff was upcoming and he thought he'd just piece it together. And, Mm -hmm. you know, the amount of time that he's waited and the amount of money he has spent, he might as well just, have waited even longer and gotten a pre-configured system, you know, in, in January, February, that would have at least gotten him a next generation video card. Then you lose the thrill of the hunt. (laughs) I know, but especially the frustration of missing and missing and missing. It's like trying to buy a console. If I wanted a PS five right now and I've had the green, this is weird. I've had the green light from my wife since before Christmas to just buy one. If I can find one. Oh, and uh, I'm a kind of a PlayStation fanboy, and I barely have any need for it. But I'm like, well, I can. She said, yes, I have to do it. But I, I think these two things are related. Anywhere. What two? Yes, things? you're allowed to buy one as long as they're not available. Oh, and it's, well, yes, it's not I know. Here. She's <laughs> smart enough to <laughs> exactly weird. That, yeah. uh, but you know what? Oddly enough, I got an Xbox Series X as well. In in yeah, you did you know, just at random in November. I didn't understand how that worked but and if i was smart i i should have just resold it but i'm not smart because i like technology and i like to be able to use it no it just makes you a good person because resellers are something evil, like that as we yeah, know they are mm, scary yeah. Boo. Boo. <sighs> all right well what else what else we got here let's move on but anyway that's a, it's a seven nanometer chip <laughs> and supposedly with apple going to five nanometer it's opening up a little bit away for space however the auto people need more chips and everybody else wants seven nanometer chips and who in the hell knows where AMD is at because they're trying to sell as many CPUs as possible because they're damn fly get away because their next generation uh, Epic processors are right around the corner and they need even more chips for that because these things have six, 12, 13 chips under the heat spreader at minimum. Big I.O. and 12 Mm -hmm. chiplets. That's a lot of nuts. Yes. Hey, speaking of a lot of chips. Speaking of nuts. And nuts. Yeah. uh, Mm. Well, this isn't epic, but it is pretty epic. If you think about it. It's sort of epic, but it's not with a Y. But yeah. Ryzen Threadripper Pro. We talked about these last summer. It was OEM only. And it was uh, originally the partner was Lenovo. They had this one system originally that had Threadripper Pro in it. But anyway, I got an email from Newegg talking about availability of this and threw this article up the other morning. Since this went up, they've actually added the box art for all of these processors. The prices are the same. And it starts off with the 3955WX, which is the 16 core, at 1149.99. Then you go up to the 32 core. 274999 and the 64 core 3995 WX is five thousand four hundred and eighty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Do you remember when we were screaming and yelling about how desktop processors were a thousand bucks? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, these are pro. I mean this is the oh they are I mean, you know, the desktop processor in a workstation. You know, these, these, but still. these people who are doing 3D visualization and all of that, it is worth every penny for them because that many threads doing the things that they want as fast as they do. Though the base clock at 2.7 gigahertz for that <laughs> biggest one is it's a little hard to swallow, but you know, the, the 16 but it's 64 core, cores at 2.7 gigahertz. Know. It's nuts. It's nuts. But you know, what's interesting about the 16 core one, yeah, you can get a 
a uh, what uh, fifty nine fifty for much less. But can you? The big thing is, well, you can well, less than five grand. <laughs> I don't see the fifty. Yeah, but, well, no, shuffle. no, the eleven hundred dollar one is the one I'm talking about. Oh, but what you get from that is a buttload of PCI 4.0 lanes. I oh, mean, yeah. what 128? I mean, look he's here. looking. He's looking. Well, I, he's I, looking. I, I'm not sure. Pretty sure. Uh, you can go ahead and look that up. I'm I'm on Newegg shopping right now for my next uh, Threader Pro. Oh well, shop away. Let's see. But Are yeah, there any boards available yet that support this? I know Asus was showcasing one on social media. I thought looks like 128 lanes, uh, Josh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when you know, just just think if they ever got their crap together and you know did it. I'm sorry, that's 128 lanes of PCIe four. By the way, oh, yeah. yeah, well, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's four point oh. How many M dot two slots does that uh, support? It it supports a lot. How many do you want? Yeah, all of well, them. Yeah, you get you get them all. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, there, there's some positive things, and and and, and we've got components and, and uh, peripherals that, you know, in terms of of individual RAID cards, um, that will actually utilize that. So you've got the professional SSDs that are PCI 4.0 that you know people right. like you and I can't even dream of because they're thousands and thousands of dollars that yeah. they'll. They'll soak that up and they'll be happy about yep. it. A eight channel mode on the on the RAM as well. Yep. Two hundred eighty watt TDP on these chips, which <laughs> is honestly lower than I thought it would be. Look at this. To be perfectly honest, oh my gosh, video cards. Look at all the <laughs> power connectors on this thing. They're, they're all over the place. Oh wow! I didn't even see the ones in the upper right hand corner. Yeah. <laughs> at first. I was originally looking at this gigabyte board. I'm like, oh, and wait, 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 wait. Go back. There's, there's, Go back two, to that one. there's two 24 there's pins two 24 on the pin. edge. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> there's two 24s. This is, this is a dual PCU. <laughs> and look, dual U.2. U. Oh, dual PSU. Oh, yeah. That's legit. Wow. We got That's the OWC real. that fails over, and then you can have four. See, this one, you know, this Sebastian, one looks you know, much more reasonable. It is. I mean, look, it only takes one PS. It is. Yeah. Interesting. One PSU and three, uh, three eight-pin CPU. Huh. You know what they say? Happily, excess is never enough. And Jeremy knows what I'm talking about. I do indeed. Hmm. But I've never tried it with two PSUs at once. Intel has introduced another consumer SSD. No, they're not out of the business. They're yeah, back, but they the sold vengeance. it. But but how? Well, I don't know. I guess it's a it's a. They're, they're literally repurposing Alan's old SSDs. Who this knows? is where Maybe. all the flashes come from. Just from his personal collection. Yes. Mm. It's like Alan, can we, we have a few him hundred on. thousand of those to yeah. sell? We should invite him on to just explain this. How can yeah. this be? Well, they're using a, a, a Silicon Motion controller with their own kind of custom firmware. They like to tailor the experience to low q depths like qd1 qd2 so it's going to be probably oh, you very mean, good performance you mean realistic realistic yeah. Yeah. real world it's all about real world yeah real mm. world uh but real. comparing this to like the 660p for example which is what they were doing look at the sequentials on this it's rated for 3500 megabytes per second mm. reads 2700 writes but this is a gen 3 drive that's pretty close to the max there on reads that's sequential of course Random uh, 4K random IOPS up to 310,000 IOPS reads, 340,000 writes. So it's not the, a Comfort world beater. Comfort play after SLC cache is full. Well, yeah, that's the other thing. It's, it's got a certain <laughs> yeah, amount. No, it, it really, you know, for that performance, it really seems expensive. Now, yes. Yeah, yes. yeah I agree. Yes. They've got the SLC, but, I mean, you look at, like, you know, that Mushkin one I link the other day for 189 bucks two terabytes so double the speed double the size similar specs similar iops using the last generation Fizon controller and tlc uh flash and it just i guess the only advantage that this really has is the wear cycles mm-hmm 
And they're That's right. significant wear cycles, but you're paying double almost. Well, not quite double, but yeah, you know, the, for a hundred thing. I, I mean, was close to, to 30, 30 to forty percent over prices. This is a yeah. screen grab from Newegg from the other yeah. day, but these prices include pretty hefty discounts of between sixteen and twenty four percent. Oh well, that's better. yeah. That's but, I mean, still, we're talking one terabyte for one thirty, and this is a QLC when, drive. When yeah, and you can get TLC stuff for nine. The six sixty p was really close to. They were blowing them out at ninety eight a little while ago. Well, yeah, it was consistently close to that ten cents per gigabyte level. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. And we all said, "Hey, this was not long after Ryan went to Intel." We're like, "This is this is the big change." Ryan goes to Intel Institute, shrouds law. <laughs> <laughs> and now here we are with the yeah. 670p at 129 on sale. But hey, yeah. it has way better performance than a 660p, at least in theory. I don't have one. Yep, I do. Oh, you have a 670p? No, a 660. Oh, okay. I don't have either one. No, it just sits there. It, I pull games off of it because that's the thing is that it's QLC. It reads just fine. It just doesn't write well. So yeah, my save game might take a second longer to copy, but that's, that's it. it did, yeah, I've got a two terabyte care. that on my test machine that that's what I install all the games on. But anyway, it's, it's, it's good that they're still pushing out some new stuff. And again, the right cycles on this as compared to other QLC drives, like the, uh, uh, what the Sabrent, uh, something Q I can't remember their PCA 4.0 with QLC, which is faster than this one, but you but don't get is the, it faster the right in those low Q depths. Probably not. I mean, Alan is over Real there. World. You'd think if, if they got any input from the maestro. Yeah. From Maltavino. Yeah. Maltavino. It's all about those low Q depths. Mixed workloads. Yeah. yeah, it'd be interesting to see a deeper dive on, on those two ones really pushed together. I mean, I've seen yeah. some basic stuff. And I think the Intel drive overall is a little bit faster in certain corner cases. But, you know, the actual total throughput of, of these PCI 4.0 QLC ones from uh, that they utilize the, the, the lower end Fizon controller is still a little bit better. Let's pause right here to hear from this week's podcast sponsor. So we were recently thinking about replacing our old mattress when out of the blue, like it was literally the next day, Helix Sleep made us an offer to try out one of their custom-tuned mattresses. I mean, we like a restful sleep, so this seemed like a really fine idea. The Helix website has a quiz that takes just a couple minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences up to one of their models which is in tune with you. Helix has several mattress models to choose from, soft, medium, firm, and ones that are great for cooling for those hot sleepers, and you know who you are, even models for plus-size folks. After taking the online Helix quiz, we were matched up with the Lux model due to our firmness requirements and sleep positions. I was a bit dubious at first because it really wasn't what we would have selected for ourselves based on personal preferences, but it turned out to be a really excellent experience. We sleep better and more comfortably than we ever have. It's a massive upgrade, and we are definitely happy with our tuned Helix mattress. Take the Helix quiz, get matched up with a mattress, and your order comes right to your door shipped for free. No need to go to the mattress store ever again. My experience has been great, but you don't need to take my word for it as Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by Wired Magazine. Check out helixsleep.com slash pcper. Do that two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you up with a mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. Try it out for 100 nights, risk-free, and sleep well with their 10-year warranty. Right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our podcast listeners at helixsleep.com slash pcper. So go check that out for a better night's sleep. Sean in the chat says, Josh, how the heck do you get a tip off when the new X shuffle starts? Mobile app failed today. Yes, Josh. How? Okay. So you go to newegg.com slash product dash shuffle. And you just leave it open on your tabs. And every morning about 930 Mountain, you refresh that. And they typically have the new one all ready to go. And you can see what they have. Because, yeah, I've got the, uh, I've got the, um, you know, the cell phone app as well. And it doesn't tell you crap. But the only way to do it is... Around 9.30 to 10 o'clock in the morning, mountain time. And today was a little bit later. I actually had to see a, uh, 
a tweet from Newegg. And let me read off what they had here. It was about 1, 12.30 to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And so you only had about 30 minutes left to get in on the uh, shuffle. But this is what they had today. They had a RTX 3060, a higher-end RTX 3060, a third RTX 3060, a fourth. No, no, a, a 3060 Ti for 619, a 3070 for 709, another 3070 for 719 and then one of the kind of more ludicrous 3070s for 769 and of course the rx 6800 for the low low price of 939 dollars and the 6800 xt for 1149 dollars and 99 cents so um those first four or five were pretty good you know the the you know, lower end 3070s is about where you expect it to be. And you've got pretty good performance out of that. A 3060 Ti, it's the first time I've seen a 3060 Ti in a while. Uh, but again, you know, at least they had a couple of, you know, not quite 329 3060s, but, you know, you got options. And so, yeah, the only way to do that is to go to newegg.com slash product dash shuffle. Check it out every day in late morning and see if those come up because you're not going to get announcements and they often do not quote it on Twitter. But today was a little bit later. So they, they resent it out on, on Twitter to say that it was active because I checked it like 10, 10 30 and there was nothing there. Ignored it. And then, you know, just happened to stumble upon that tweet and redid it. And it's like, wow, that's, there are some pretty decent video cards at okay prices, you know, close to close to MSRP on a couple of them. So, yeah, that's how you do it. You got to pay attention, and that's so, okay because you've got time. Maybe. Hey, light shaking makes hard drives faster, says Jeremy Hellstrom. What on earth does this oh. mean? Oh, I, I just you're going to make me try and understand this. Okay. <laughs> I, okay, so to start out, um, hard drives are generally made out of magnetic properties because, well, it, it's it's sort of magnetic storage and you kind of like that to work. But there's a certain class of material which is known as an anti-ferromagnetic material. Now, you can indeed induce it to become magnetic, but because of the nature of it, it doesn't have a whole... Uh, overall magnetism. It's just literally tiny little bits of it can be magnetized or demagnetized. And it doesn't affect anything next to it. So you don't get, uh, you know, the, the bleed that you sort of do, which is stopping from platters from becoming so incredibly dense that, uh, you know, the 100 gigabyte or, or the 100 terabyte drive is, you know, around the corner. So some researchers um, out of Delft University in the Netherlands uh, have been working on uh, some esoteric ways of storing stuff on hard drives that, you know, just helps increase the capacity because we still use hard drives, but also increases the speed at which you can write to them. So they screwed around with something called dysprosium orthoferrite, which is, as I mentioned, an anti-ferromagnetic material. And they discovered that if you zap it with uh, an inf infrared laser, you can magnetize or demagnetize tiny little portions, uh, depending, of course, on how fine uh, your laser is. And as opposed to it taking uh, around the neighborhood of five nanoseconds or so to be able to flip uh, the magnetic from uh, on to off, these guys are doing it in picoseconds. It's like a thousand times faster. And so even if, you know, it, you know, it, it, because of real world, you lose at least 10%. So it's only a hundred times faster than the existing hard drives you've got now. Hell, even 10% or 10 times faster is still putting you up in SSD levels and, you know, giving you sort of a, a much more stable because again, the, the magnetics, are individual to the little bits of the the lattice the crystal lattice inside this material so it's not going to decay 
it, it's going to be much more solid and uh, recoverable than your average SSD. Now, this is forever away. Like, you're not going to go out and buy a hard drive with this exotic material and the, the right head is an actual little infrared laser. But it, it's lovely to see that they're still working on newer and better hard drive technologies because there are a lot of us who still depend on hard drive for, if not cold storage, at least you know moderately warm storage that doesn't need the access speeds that an SSD is going to go. It would be really interesting to see if they could get something, you know, not as not the the absolute best case scenario where it's a thousand times faster with this crystal lattice uh, vibration, but you know, even ten times faster, every bit or more stable, and sort of you know, s- relatively affordable would be lovely to see. So I just saw this and I thought it was rather kind of nifty. It's one of those science stories that. You know, Jeremy always brings that that flavor to the podcast where I'm trying yeah. to understand and I don't. It's all completely over my head. Well, that's because and I'm that's, not explaining it properly. That's why we need to talk about these things. You know, because yeah. the word has to get out on this. Well, well yeah, People yeah, we to have know. to. Yes, not like internally. So, not like we should prepare or go through show notes beforehand or anything. Hell no, nah, absolutely. This not. is the first time anybody's ever seen it. I have never heard of this before. I saw it on the list, so I rely. Well, on I actually Jeremy read all of these. It. By the way, you read all these stories? Why? You're insane. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So, Physics World, you can pop over and actually get a link to the paper that they did. Uh, and the paper, of course, you're able to access Physics World and you get five free reads a month. Oh, okay. Academic papers, even. Yes. It, it's it's nifty, and some of the pictures are really sexy if you like pictures of really, really, really tiny things. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of attracted to that. But never mind. Yeah. I'm not going to go <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, we don't have to talk about that. Aliens Fire Team. A new chance to ruin the franchise? This is another Jeremy Hellstrom story. Yeah, yeah, but he's right with that title. So, okay, explain this to me. Well, do, do you not remember Colonial Marines? Okay. That's sad, the, the one sad. with, with the uh, friendly aliens that you could sort of really just literally walk up to and they wouldn't do anything? Because <laughs> in the scripting, somebody misspelled A-I-A-A-I, and so it wasn't calling a lot of the stuff. Not to mention it looked like a garbage game. Uh, And of course, you know, I I did have to mention Alien Isolation because that was a really good game, but it's not the same. You're not running around gunning and hoping to hell that there isn't someone behind you or that you missed a chestburster somewhere. Because the the old games were as intense as the movies. Uh, You started to hear the beep, 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 and you started to freak because you didn't know where the hell it was coming from. They have since ruined this franchise multiple times. So this is a new, uh, at least to me, a uh, company called Cold Iron Studios. And they've uh, teased this years ago with absolutely no, uh, nothing to back it up. No pictures, no anything. Today, they sort of mentioned that here, take a look. Here is our uh, trailer of a third person cooperative class-based aliens game with skills and customizable weapons. And at some point in there, I've gone back to the, you know, that's not what I was hoping it would be. Uh, especially yeah, the but third who, person. Who, who didn't like Gauntlet? This is like True. Gauntlet with guns. True. Maybe. I don't know. Except less food. But that was top down. This is third person. So yeah. yeah. And the, the, a lot of the camera angles make it look. So is this third person or is this a cut scene or is it one of those mm-hmm. wonderful third persons where you're shooting and all of a sudden the camera decides it's got to piss over to the next room for a little bit and then come back to <laughs> see you die. Uh, so yeah. I'm worried. Uh, cooperative shooting is a little bit different from. Oh, shite, I am going to die alone. But then the original Aliens and some of the AVPs did have a multiplayer survival mode. 
um, which was actually a hell of a lot of fun, especially if you were sitting close enough to someone to punch them when they did something dumb. So it's interesting. It'll be out this summer. Uh, they didn't give an exact date, and well, we all know that uh, release dates have been a little bit flexible this year, but I don't think they'd say it was this close to coming up if it wasn't relatively done at this point. So keep an eye out for it. Uh, it might be a hell of a lot of fun. It might be just another knock out of the franchise. Hey, on the subject of games, what is this about Space Beast? You'd have to ask well, Brett, I think. I added this because okay. it. this is actually sort of not exactly Aliens Fireteam because it looks like those guys actually have a license to the IP. But these guys, back in 2015, started to put together a game called, funnily enough, Space Beast Terror Fright. Okay. And if you watch a couple of these games, it actually captures a lot of the horror confined elements of alien and aliens and uses very similar sound uh, scape, very similar audio cues from the movies, not quite a ripoff, but very similar aspects to it. Very lit in such uh, similar ways. So a remote sensory guns. Yes. As it yes. were. And I've watched it. This isn't exactly the gameplays it is now because they've been updating it. It's available on Steam, early access title. I, I put the Steam link in there as the second uh, element in there. But it's it's co-op, obviously multiplayer. There's a strategy element to it as well. And it's kind of like the maybe the Colonial Marines that you maybe wanted to play but never really got a chance to play. It's not quite IP um you know, married to the aliens IP, but it captures the the horror, frenetic, scary, run and gun elements that were done so well in the aliens movies. So if you're if you're sort of jonesing for this type of game and want to capture the this gameplay style before this fire team thing comes out, this thing looks like it's like it is serves that up on a silver platter. And for fifteen bucks, and, I don't know how you can go wrong. Yeah, fifteen bucks is not bad. But I gotta be honest, yeah, I check miss- that link on Steam. I miss being the alien. <laughs> that was just so utterly fun. I was watching, I, I don't even know how I stumbled into it. It was just one of those YouTube holes you end up in. And they were chatting with some of the developers from the original one. And they said, we didn't realize it until someone had pointed out to us. But if you had the alien on a flat out run and you measured how fast it was literally breaking the sound barrier. And it's true <laughs> because when I got good at a map, I, the one thing, everything's the floor everything i don't care and you just go by so by the time the marines had spawned gotten their shite out of their sock you're already sitting above one just sort of waiting until everyone looks away and you just let go boom, and eat them and are gone again before they even know what the hell happened it was a wonderful experience and it was also a very aliens experience so i'm hoping that they bring this back yeah eric on natural selection is not a bad one but it's not quite the same i can't put my tongue through the back of their head and laugh Uh. (laughs) yeah anyway this one's in constant development uh so you know support the devs if you want to see more of that sort of thing or wait for aliens fire team and hope for the best but watch a couple of the playthroughs or the videos on uh youtube and uh just to get a sense of it it looks pretty good hey did you know that intel has discontinued its overclocking warranty plan, the performance I think the protection. The question you want to ask first is, did you know Intel had I a did warranty? because I was right. the paranoid person who bought my 2600K. Is that Sandy Bridge? And I bought this for like $20. And yeah, then later bucks, I'm like, yeah. why? So I think I actually returned it. I think you could return it within a certain number of days. It's like I'm not doing anything insane with it. And this. you hadn't voided the warranty yet? Apparently not, but no, that, that processor was fine. But so, we- yeah, Intel used to have this warranty if you blew it up. Do you think the timing of this is suggestive at all? They're I do. Just about that's to why I well, they don't sell it, their yeah. cards anymore, so why should they bother? Well, that's true. <laughs> We've, we can never forget about those. No, never the forget. The cards to unlock performance. But, yeah, I mean, it was... I don't remember exactly how much it was. I thought it was like $25. And then if you you register it, you have a single CPU attached to this. And if you kill it, trying to overclock it, overvolt it, I'm assuming is how you'd actually do it. 
then yeah. they'll replace it. Or thermal, you know. I don't know. If there, there are there. protections built into CPUs. I don't think thermals would even... Oh, you can boot you. up the yeah, yeah, CPU without yes, a cooler right. and it'll yeah. just shut itself off. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So I... It, or at least run at like 0. 0.2 gigahertz. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got a machine today that was doing that. The, so, so yeah, I think the timing blow. is somewhat suspicious. Okay. They they claim, according to Tom's hardware, that it is seeing lower demand for the plan. Did it ever see demand at all for the plan? I'm sure. I think it's seeing very few people even lower demand. Interested. Lower demand for their CPUs. I think that's what they meant to say, right? I don't know. Is that it? They uh, they clawed no. a little bit of market share back that last quarter. I thought, mm. but just that's an availability issue for AMD. I We're talking about DIY though. though. Actually Overall, had. what's that, Josh? I think I knew actually <laughs> one person who had that, and actually they they made good on it because they fried their CPU. I think it was Keith from WCCF Tech. Oh, really? Okay. Could have been. He actually bought that, and he was going crazy with it and fried it and had the overclocking insurance and got a new CPU. So, I mean, there are a handful of people who probably did it. I mean, if, if you're Did really Lori do that when he... Do you no, let him crack it? He did. No, no, oh, because he didn't ha- oh, I thought that void the warranty. That void. <laughs> yeah, it just fell off, man. I don't understand. Yeah, I don't get it. I, <laughs> I, I had a device. So hard and I was hitting. The, I was tap, the adhesive just, just came it. off. With the just hand a tap, tapity tap. Mm. Okay. Crack. Well, it is what it is. I don't think it was that popular to begin with, but it's gone now. Just in time for eleventh gen to come out. Hmm. Now, now speaking of reliability. Yes, great segue. And, and yep. Does this surprise when you anyone? By the way, this is. I mean, are, I is think this it's a millennial it for a surprise. You're like, what? The latest and so. greatest tech isn't. In, no, it's what's hardened. It's what actually works. You don't need the latest and greatest. Mars is highly radioactive, and if you don't have hardened components, your mission is going to be very, very, very short. And so these are thick, big chips that they can absorb some radiation and some, uh, you know, gamma particles and whatnot and not flip bits easily. Not get accidentally flashed. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> you want that because you want this thing to last for years on a very unhealthy planet for Hostile. electronics not to mention organic Just materials everything. yeah yeah i mean it doesn't have doesn't have a magnetosphere to uh to speak about because the core stopped hang uh, uh, are rotating yeah but they got a helicopter which is kind of cool yeah it was brilliant wasn't it i'll be curious yeah well, well they so, haven't launched it yet but it's going to be interesting to see yeah for the uh, audio listeners in the crowd, this is a, a, a PowerPC 750 that was used in the uh, late 90s era iMac G3, hence came the, uh, the sort of tongue-in-cheap re- reference to, is there an iMac on Mars? Not really. You know, it's just the, the CPU that was in the, in the 90s and early 2000s, G3 uh, Macs and I, or iMacs. And uh, yeah, as Josh was saying, it... Um, takes a uh, solar flare and keeps on ticking. That was the point. Mm-hmm. It wakes up every day and, and does its 233 megahertz best. <laughs> that was the Which base, is exactly what you want. 233 was the lowest speed. I don't think they're G3. overclocking it. No. Yeah, they're, they're probably, probably keeping it in spec. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, and we that's, have, uh, that's the newest lander that, that just landed. Yes, that was Perseverance. The, so. Perseverance, yes. So even, even the latest and greatest. Because this is the... This is the process they use in satellites, right? It's in, I think I read like I 100 so. satellites and it's never yeah. failed. Yeah. So why wouldn't and it? And it has never missed a beat or bit, either either one. It's just, it's too slow to miss a bit. I mean, how could it? <laughs> it takes a, a solar day to flip. Hey, there's still like, <laughs> there's still 6 million transistors in there, man. 6 million. Each bit is like, you know, a rotation of the earth. Yeah, but here, here's the thing is, it's like 2.3 to 2.8 volts. So yeah. even if you get some stray electrons in there, it's going to just shrug it off. It's like, 
Yeah. Hey, welcome Two to the tsunami. Man. Yeah, you'd yeah. Think, just yeah. throw an arm processor up there; it would consume nothing. Look, you can't. You know, they're not quite as hardened. Yeah, but then you they. Know, yeah, that's a good point, Josh. Has when your true voltage is so far above the spurious voltage floor, you're like, ah, just ignore that noise. But yeah, an arm processor operating at such low voltage, spurious yeah. electrons could be like, oh, is that a bit? You know, it's more so. sensitive. Yep. The yeah. makes, PC is is that makes is, a good point. Uh, Calloused <laughs> and uh, not as sensitive anymore. Uh, Intel DG2 GPU. Now, I know they had said 2021. They did. This is 2021, 2021, however you want to say I it. I believe you are correct. Is it actually going to happen? What does Raja say on Twitter? I have not seen this. This is via Guru3D here. Lots to look forward to this year. Will arrive. Okay. I mean, that's what they're inferring from that. It would arrive in two models, one with 4,096 shaders. That's 512 CUs. 8 gigs of GDDR6. That's exciting. 8 gigabytes. I've I've been told that's not enough. And the other with... It's barely enough. 1,024 shaders and only 6. Oh, gross. 6 gigabytes. You can't do anything with that. Uh, you know, except game at, you know, 1440 in most titles, but... Uh, yeah. I guess that's Depends not. on your texture pack. Exactly. I mean, if... The oldest game I currently use, I think, is Far Cry 5. And Far Cry 5... Far Cry 5 with the Ultra HD textures loaded at 4K Ultra uses, like, 5.84 gigabytes of VRAM. There were some folks in the uh, YouTube chat talking about ARK, ARK. Uh, yeah, but you, you're picking one game that uses a spectacular amount of VRAM. In general, and? most games use between 4 and 8, even sure. up to 4K. You can really push it. I mean, we were trying to push it when the Radeon 7 came out. And AMD's official stance back then, we had Scott Wasson explaining to us how to do... like. Um, like the super sampling stuff, like render it off screen at 8K and then down sample out to a 4K display and you'll get 12 gigabytes of VRAM usage in you know, such and such a game. Like, okay. And I tried this myself and I was brilliant. I used Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 4K, no, 8K high, I think. I was getting two frames per second, but I was using <laughs> that much VRAM. So at, at some point... You need more <sighs> GPU horsepower before you need that much VRAM. Yeah. That was the problem with the Radeon 7. Although, of course, having a wonderful second life as the second highest rated mining card as far as raw performance, I think maybe third highest, I don't know. Good for it. Yeah, good for Radeon 7 owners. Josh, how much does Flight Sim use? I mean, for reals. Oh, yeah, that's true. That, would, that was another one. Oh, he's he's muted. Don't he's, got, he's caught the mute. Sorry, I was clearing my throat earlier, and it, it was it was unpleasant in the extreme. But uh, yeah, no, eight to eleven gigs, depending on where you're at and what you're doing. So, I imagine you can push that up higher, depending on uh, other settings. But yeah, it's. Uh, I keep meaning to look because Warhammer seems to chew up a shite load. I think the ultimate. Uh, yardstick is just stuttering because if you run out of VRAM, you start swapping yep. system RAM, you're going to get noticeable you stuttering. Good notice. So yeah, I mean, unless you, unless you've got that sideband address addressing, that's a joke sad. because that's sad. AGP. Sad. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah. sideband. Oh, no, yeah. you, you got to raise the bar now. No, we oh, gotta no. resize the bar. No, you've you've gotta lay in rebar. <laughs> how how what is that the super pipe? To increase <laughs> the super pipe. What was the AGP there was that memory window you had to set in the BIOS? I cannot remember what it was called. Oh gosh, yeah, you're right. The AGP it was oh, like sixty four megabytes by default on a lot of boards, but you could increase it to like two fifty six, yeah. I think. The um the A bit boards had a resizable one. Gert. Cart? Yeah. Um, maybe. yeah, I think North Rangers, right? Yeah. Graphics, graphics aperture yeah, resource so table. S aperture, yes. Oh yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the aperture was what That's you, it. yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I thought it was just all hard sometimes, back. but yeah. Hey, speaking of graphics. Wait, so am I supposed to match my AGP to my front side bus or? Uh... Hey, that was the one thing that we kind of missed is that uh, they're they're doing a resizable bar on uh, the the uh, Ryzen three thousand series. Yeah, it's true. Oh that. gosh, that yes, yep. today. It's been yeah. I mean, hell, yeah. even Nvidia says they're going to do it now. It's part of the spec, well, so why wouldn't it? Well, yeah, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, I guess it was it was addended. It was an addendum to PCI two point but it wasn't really implemented. However, it was a base thing on PCI three point and so, pretty much in, in theory, every PCA 3.0 CPU would support it. But I doubt AMD is going to go back and enable that in uh, AGESA and, and BIOS for the 2000 series. But the amount of 3000 processors that are still being sold and still being used, it mm-hmm. makes more sense to enable that functionality in them. And they have the space in AGESA to do it because yeah. there's still a modern processor that they're selling a lot of hmm. 3600 is consistently one of the top selling every time i go to new oh, yeah. r5 3600 best seller for 195 yep yeah so i mean always on sale it's into that good enough range i think my next build i'm gonna do it i have a case review i need to get done and like why not just go R5, 3600. I think I have a 3600X, though. And then a graphics card you can actually find, which is going to be tough. So a GT 1030? 1030, man. GT 710. I have a 1050 Ti. I have a 980. I didn't take anything older than 980 from the old office. I should have, because then I could be retesting, like, hey, gaming on a 780 Mm -hmm. Ti in 2021. I've got a, a GeForce 5700X T somewhere around. <laughs> How much here? memory does that have? Like 512 megabytes? Not even. It's like 80 GTS over there. Yeah. 128. Yeah, I think no. It, no, it may even be 64 meg. Ooh. Okay. So uh, wait. No, I think it's 128 because it's half of a 5900. Josh, get really weird. There's a 6800 me. GS over there. So it's hey, it's time. It's time for pick of the week. That no, no, we all, I had one. Look one again. Person added. He it. Look again. started it. Oh wait, no. So he had sneaky. He started it. Sneaky. Okay, hold on. He did. Let's see. Blame what? him. What now? Jeremy and Brett have one too. Okay, Josh starts. Oh, as who doesn't have one again? Me. I'm Jeez, too busy I don't know. Show to, to worry about picks. All right, Josh. <laughs> You have the primary camera now. La-dee-da. All right. Yes. Uh, you know, I've got to have, I've got to try this. Valheim. It's only 1999. It's, it's, you know, survival type thing of Ark and Minecraft. But apparently. But the Caesar made a trampoline. Sure. Have you not seen anyway, that? No, not yet. But I'm going to have to because it's it's apparently quite fun. Friends of mine have servers already, and they just are having a heck of a time. So, you know, for that much money, it's not a whole lot out of your out of your wallet. Give it a go. Maybe you'll like it. Twenty bucks. You're muted. It's uh, it's the same price as an Intel warranty. So I mean, you can oh, buy one. Yeah, get those anymore though. Oh, so you so gotta you might buy as well this get this. Yeah, yeah. There uh, you my go. Yep, my muted comment was that uh, on my end, uh, that was just a still frame of a bird, and I'm hoping everybody actually saw the video playing. It moved. Yeah, it, it moved. Did move. Move. Okay, good. It was just on yeah. my end. All yep. right, good. Uh, Jeremy. Uh oh. Well, I found the little video about the. You, you, I think you should play this. It 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 is quite amusing, Uh-oh, and also okay. shows what you can do in Valheim. Hold on, did you just add another pick? No, but uh, I threw it in public. But there's it isn't staff too. Oh, okay. I didn't, that I no, this is for up. Josh. Okay, All right, yeah. uh, Jeremy, your pick. Oh, here it is. I had it pulled up. 
So, uh... You know, you're frustrated because you can't find an AMD product and you really want to build a new system. Well, I've got good news for you uh, right now, and this is the, the Kanukistan version, but the i9-1090K is 200 bucks off. It's $600. It's not a damn bad deal. It is a good processor. And, you know, you can find a decent bargain on the motherboard right now. And the key, the key is... It's in stock. You can buy the damn thing. So if you are looking at holding out forever to be able to pick up a new Ryzen, I mean, so be it. Do that. But if you're kind of hoping that you can get something put together in the near future, Comet Lake is a decent choice. And if you can't did quite you, spend did you really that much... Just, did you really just say, if you're holding out for Ryzen, buy Intel? Did you really just say that? Just Because you're going to be waiting a while for that... Uh, that Ryzen processor. I, I locked out, I got <laughs> mine, but that was a lot of work and quite expensive. And I mean, hell, for 440, you can get the, the 10700. So it's it's decent. It's available. And in the US, that's, it's, that's the key. It's 469, which for a 10 core, 469 is not bad. That's. Uh, honestly, we've got a better deal up here. Yeah. It's, it's and if you very, go to everybody's favorite store, Micro Center, it's even cheaper, isn't it? It's even cheaper. Well, you the can't do is, that up here. Here, here's a crucial uh, facet, if that's the right word, to this discussion. The AMD like holding out. Intel has a big advantage here because Ryzen, other than the Ryzen with Radeon graphics, they don't have integrated graphics. You have to have a GPU. You can't buy GPUs right now unless you get something like that's a the reason. Not to get the KF. Get the right, K. so get the 10900K. It's got those sweet UHD graphics that you just can't get enough of. They, it will display a picture on a monitor. It will. and It'll refresh it occasionally, too. 60 times per second, I've, I've heard. That resolution's up to 4K, though I'm not sure if it does 4K60. <laughs> it might do 4K60, but... Hey, and, and that was what I was noticing with those Dell systems I mentioned earlier. They're just using yeah. the HD 630 graphics on these 10th gen mm -hmm. Intel processors because they're like, we're not putting That's video crazy. cards in this. It's a $1,000 PC. You don't need a video card. Well, and nah, they couldn't get whatever. someone to modify it for a stupid-ass Dell PCIe connector. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Proprietary PSUs are my issue there, but... Yes. yes. Let's see. Brett. But, I mean, like, if you luck out, like, my with the 5800X, it's good on you, but... You're going to be working. Together. I know, but the 5800X feels like a bad buy to me. I was at Newegg when I was doing the Threader for Pro story. 5800X was in stock, but it's 449 And I'm just looking at that and the 5900X. Like, I, I'd it's take like, the 5900X. Wait, 449 is that? Isn't that MSRP? Yeah, it was selling for list price. Yeah, it was. Okay, yeah. yeah. But, but it's still, just, it's, it's a core 16 thread for that much money. And, and right, you can I get would, a, uh, a 3900X for not a whole lot more. No, or get Josh, a 10, you, can get a 10, you can get a 10 700 K for 279, I think. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Eight core Intel yeah. is cheaper right now. Yeah. Which is 816. Same, same, same. Okay. I what? Mean, I wanted the same thing as my Threadripper 1900, just a new generation. <clears throat> Brett, please enlighten I put us in, on some exciting I, UPS look, battery upgrades. Look, it's boring. It's boring, man. But when you actually have to, like, have a whole bunch of UPSs in your place, office, house, whatever, and you're tired of replacing them every 10, 12, 13 months or something like that because you're buying cheap crap, actually probably break down and finally buy good batteries that aren't really nasty, you know, remade, potentially imported from a country that's not doing a good job at it. These guys are Canadian. Um, I've been using uh, their sets of batteries here for a little while, and... Uh, they're a little bit more money batteries. and yeah, you guys do. And hopefully, and you also mine it up there as well. You know, some of True. the, the uh, raw earth materials that actually go yep. into making these sorts of things. So my hope is, is that these are going to out way outlast some of the ones that I paid 10 or $20 less each for over a period of time. And they are the, some of the highest quality shipped batteries I've ever had. I just recently did a few uh, here a little while ago and just got them in and I'm like, wow, I'm in, just really impressed outside the, the casing and stuff looks the same, but the way they shipped them was amazing. The warranty 
is for real and you know they're here in north america so a little bit more money but it looks like they know what they're doing so if you hate replacing your batteries actually spend the money and buy good ones price is good too for today 60 bucks and hey if you want it to run at negative 40 it will it's like a car yeah i mean I paid I paid forty nine dollars a piece for a pair that went into an APC uh, thousand I have a or fifteen hundred I upsized the ones in a thousand to take the fifteen hundred batteries you got to take a bar out then you can put in the larger yeah. batteries. Does the firmware in the device complain about this or does it just see it as a bigger? It did, it did not. It just hmm. yeah. It still I put a meter in it as well, so it still charges it at the at just what I would consider the right voltage. So twenty seven point five twenty seven point four volts. So yeah. that seems seems right. Don't use the supercharge on those. No, don't. <laughs> to no. get mad. Now, no, at they some get a little point, bulbous. You just buy the 15, you buy the 1,000, then you put in a meter and two bigger batteries. Uh, I, I have both. I have a 15 and a 1,000. Duct tape. I, I did that. It, how did you know it had duct tape on it? It's black, though. It's very tasteful. Mm-hmm. It's black duct tape. It's All electrical right. tape, but. It's well, fun. I think that's it. It'll be fun. I, we're out of picks because I didn't have one. That's awesome. This, that and makes we were me done happy. in like an hour and 20 minutes. Bam. It's because there Huzzah. was no, uh, no review this week. Yeah, that's true. I didn't finish putting in Kent's review that's coming before the end of the week. I've got to put that in. He's got a thermal take case review. And I've got a couple things that I need to finish writing up. But hey. Oh, man. Thermal take. The people that design those cases, they're like mad lunatics. That's all I want to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And on that note, uh, tune in again next week or, you know, refresh your podcatcher next week for Mm -hmm. more just like this. Well, not exactly like this, but but different in the weeks to follow. You'll be delighted by what you hear and see. (laughs) Hundreds of you will also see it as well. (laughs) Thanks. Good night.